In this week's video tech tip, we're going to be talking about some of the tools available to you if you want to 3D print your SOLIDWORKS designs. All of these tools can be accessed through the Print 3D tool, which you can access by going to File and Print 3D. The first thing that you want to do is select which printer you want to print on. If I go to Manage Favorites, SOLIDWORKS has an extensive library of 3D printers. You can find the 3D printers that you own, select it, and then choose to add it to your favorites for easy access in the future. If you do not find your printer on this list, you can go to Custom Printer and manually type in the dimensions of your print volume. Next, we want to select the plane or planar face that we want to use as the bottom plane of our print. Now, I could expand out my Flyout Feature Manager tree and select one of my standard planes. However, in this case, I can simply select this bottom face of the model, and SOLIDWORKS will automatically place the model on the print bed, giving me this preview. If I want, I can change the default orientation by modifying the angle or changing the offset from the center. I can also select Orient to Fit, which will let SOLIDWORKS orient the model for you in the most efficient way. If you wanted to print your model in a scale other than 1, you can type in your scale factor here. Or you can also select Scale to Fit, and SOLIDWORKS will put in the largest scale that will still fit within your print volume. Now I'm going to jump over to the Preview tab so you can see some of the analysis tools that are also available. The first one is the Build Analysis. What this allows you to do is that it detects any overhanging faces that are at an angle larger than what I input here to let me know which faces are going to need support. If I turn this around, I can see that this face created by the fillet is going to need some support because of that overhang. I also recommend turning on this Show as Transparent option so that it's a little bit easier to preview any internal faces that are going to need support as well. The Layer Height option allows you to visualize the resolution of your 3D print so that you can find an acceptable layer height for your requirements. You can type in your layer height and check on Show Striation Lines. So if I zoom in, you can see how the layer height is going to look based on your model geometry. And finally, the Thickness Slash Gap Analysis if you are printing using FDM or Fused Deposition Modeling, this tool will calculate the ideal wall thickness based on the layer height that you set and based on the FDM material that you can select from right here. Now, all these analysis and visualization tools are great, but how do we get from SOLIDWORKS to the printer? Well, for most of you, I can go back to the Settings tab and then scroll all the way down to Save to File. From here, I can export to three different 3D printing file formats, STL, 3MF, and AMF. These files can then be imported into your printer slicer software, which will then send the G-code to the printer. However, if your computer is connected to a 3D printer that uses the SOLIDWORKS 3D Print API, you are actually able to print directly from SOLIDWORKS. You would first choose the resolution, this is how the printer is going to pick the layer height. You can select your infill percentage, basically the percentage of your part that is going to be solid plastic. You can choose to include supports to prevent the overhanging faces from failing, and you can choose to include a raft, which can help with bed adhesion. Once you are happy with your print options, you can click on OK, and a rapid prototyping dialog box would pop up asking you to make sure that the print bed is clear, and then it'll start warming up your printer and then start the actual print. So even if you end up using a more robust slicer software to send your models to your printer, the Print 3D tool can still serve as a great first step to understand the 3D printing requirements for your model and help inform you as to what settings you may want to use in your slicer software.